is take a plastic container. I want you to go to the pool and reach arm's length down, about 18 inches below the surface, to get the water sample. The reason I want you to take the sample from 18 inches below the surface is that we want a sample of water that's representative of what's in the pool as a whole. We don't want to take from that top six inches of water. It's very, very different than what's in the rest of the pool. It goes through a tremendous amount of abuse. 90% of the sun's rays are absorbed in that top six inches of water. 80% of the bacteria that develops in a pool develops in that top six inches of water. 100% of the gack that comes off the people that don't shower before they get in the water floats right on the surface. So it's very, very different than what we have in the pool as a whole. The other thing I want you to do is make sure that you're away from the return lines when you take the sample. Why don't I want to take the water from near the return lines? It's chemical. That water has just been chemically treated. It's just been filtered. It hasn't had a chance to blend or mix in with the rest of the water in the pool. So that sample would not be representative of the pool as a whole. So I want to go 18 inches below the surface and away from the return lines to get my sample. So we've rinsed out the test block to make sure we don't have any cross-contamination from the other pools. We filled the vial to the top line with water, keeping conscious again of the fact that we have a meniscus, which is the natural curvature of water in a container. DPD number one of the smaller vial, I'm gonna hold it straight up and down and release one drop at a time, releasing the reagent bottle in between each drop for a total of five drops holding the bottle straight up and down because I want to ensure a consistent drop size. If I turn the bottle a little to the left or a little to the right, I'll get an inconsistent drop. If I just squeeze all the drops and don't allow air back into the bottle in between, I will consistently get a smaller drop size. So one drop at a time, straight up and down, releasing the bottle in between each drop. Next, I'm going to add five drops of DPD number two. The combination of DPD number one and DPD number two will give me my free available chlorine level. Again, five drops, one drop at a time, releasing in between each drop. Now, because I filled both vials, I'm also gonna add my test solution to test for pH. Does anybody know the name of the test solution we use to test pH? The name of the chemical we use to test pH is called phenol, phenol red. Phenol red is easy to remember because it starts with pH. So we'll take that, take the cap off of the bottle, and I'll add five drops in the same manner, this time to the larger vial. Put my cap back on. I want to make sure that I put the caps back onto the reagents after each use because I don't want my reagent itself to become contaminated. I also want to make sure that I don't put the wrong cap on the wrong bottle. Sometimes you can see that the nipples of the bottle start to turn color. That would be an indication that the wrong cap was put on the wrong bottle and it became cross-contaminated. After I've put the drops in, I'll put the caps back on that came with the kit, shake it up, and then I'll take my test block and I'm going to hold it up to the lights of the northern horizon the lights of the northern horizon and hold the test block up to the lights of what the northern horizon and we hold it up to the light up to the lights up to the lights lights of the northern 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 horizon and hold it up to the lights of the northern horizon the next thing we're going to so do is check our total point one and two in this vial gives us our free chlorine rate. By adding five drops of number three, that will give us our total chlorine If there's a difference in the two, that would indicate that we have a combined chlorine level. Total chlorine minus free chlorine equals combined chlorine. So we add the five drops of number three, hold that up to the lights of the northern horizon, and do we have a difference in color? Okay. So we don't have a difference? 
So then there is no combined chlorine level, which is good. We don't want a combined chlorine level. This is a colorimetric test. It relies on matching If my pH colors. was high, I would take my acid demand reagent, add one drop at a time, swirl in between each drop until I get the color into the correct range. Take the number of drops it took to make that happen, the gallons of water in the pool, and refer to the booklet that comes in the kit. There's a chart in there. The number of drops I added in the pool gallonage in that chart, you can find, it will tell you exactly to the ounce how much acid you need to add to make that change occur. The same thing in the opposite end. If my pH was low, I would use my base demand reagent, add one drop at a time, swirl in between each drop until the color turned the correct range. Can we see it's getting darker? Once I get to that correct range, I would take the number of drops it took to make that change happen, the gallons of water in the pool, refer to the chart, and it will tell me to the ounce how much soda ash I need to add to make that change occur. So these are valuable. They take the guesswork out of it. I keep putting the caps back on this to shake it. Why wouldn't I just use my fingertips to keep the liquid in the Your body pH body. and alkalinity. Yes, I have my own book chemistry. I would change the chemistry of the sample. This is only a tiny bit of water. So we want to make sure that we always use the caps. The other reason is for our personal safety. You really don't ever want to touch the reagents. So we use the caps, that way our fingertips don't come in contact. Where we're with matching the colors, that's calorimetric. The alkalinity test doesn't match colors, it relies upon a color change. So what type of test is that where it's a color change? <laughs> titration. Titration or titrometric is, involves a color change. So we'll fill the larger vial to the midpoint to the 25 milliliter mark. Again, keeping conscious of the fact that we have a meniscus, which is the natural curvature of water in a vial. <laughs> Always when someone's on the spot, it's hard to hit that line. So we're adding two drops of the chlorine neutralizer because again the alkalinity test is more susceptible to the effects of chlorine. Next we're going to add five drops of the alkalinity indicator. If there's any alkalinity in that solution, the water will turn green. Give it a nice swirl. Now using test solution number nine, which is sulfuric acid, we'll add one drop at a time until the color changes from green to red. We're gonna make sure that we track the number of drops that it takes. The number of drops will then be multiplied by 10 and that will give us our total alkalinity. Go add another drop until we get the complete color change. Worst case scenario is it doesn't get more of a change and it actually did, it's got a nice pink color to it. So how many drops did that take? Six. So what's the alkalinity in this body of water? 60 parts per million. Awesome. Whenever we're doing a test that involves a color change, that type of test is known as a titration test. What's titrometric. another titrometric test that's included in this kit? Calcium. Your calcium hardness. We're making a color change. So the means of testing calcium hardness is also a titration test because we're making a color change. Again, matching colors, <coughs> calorimetric, making a color change, titration or titrometric. What's the other kit that's included, or the other test that's included in this kit? Anybody? Cyanuric acid. Cyanuric acid.